Hi everyone, I'm Susan Mulvihill and welcome back to my vegetable garden. Here we are in early July and that means it's time for the second vegetable garden tour of the season. And I'm sure my garden looks just a little bit different from the last time that you saw it. You know, we've had a very strange spring and early summer. We've had hot days, we've had lots of chilly days. As a matter of fact, today is a chilly day. We've had rain, we've had windstorms, we've pretty much had it all. So some of the garden is doing fabulously, some of it's not doing so great. So I'm gonna show you both of those types of things because there's always a teaching moment in all of this. Let's get started. I'm gonna take you through the garden row by row because that's the easiest way to show you how everything is doing. So let's start in the hoop house. As many of you know, we use the hoop house during the winter months to grow salad greens and that works great. But this time of year, we like to grow warm season crops in there because the warmth of the hoop house really makes the crops thrive. So in here this year, we're growing peppers. That's actually Bill's pepper crop. We're growing sweet peppers and hot peppers. And if you look closely, you can see that some of the plants are starting to develop peppers. They're getting a little bit of a slow start and we think that's because the hoop house is in an area that doesn't get quite as much light as the rest of the garden. So we're going to move it this fall into a lighter area and then plants should do better. In the bed right next to the hoop house, I'm growing summer squash. In the front part of the bed, I've got three bush type zucchinis. The variety is Claremore, which is a light skin zucchini that is absolutely delicious. And then on that metal grid, on the back side of the bed, I'm growing Trombetta di Albenga, which is a trombone zucchini. If you've never heard of them before, they grow in really unusual shapes and their flesh tastes like artichoke hearts. So I heartily recommend them. We have started harvesting the bush zucchini and that has been delicious. And we're noticing that the vines of the trombone zucchini are starting to go up that support. So we're looking forward to a harvest from them as well. Next is the garlic bed. And you'll notice that some of the leaves are turning yellow. How do you know when garlic is ready to harvest? When you look at the lowest two leaves on the stem and you see that they're both brown, that means it's time to pull them up and move them to an area where they can dry. The next bed over is our copra onion bed and they are doing really well. What I'm going to start doing now is harvesting every other onion to use for cooking and that will leave extra room for the remaining onions so they can form a nice big bulb. In this bed, I'm growing purple of Sicily cauliflower. And I have to tell you, I don't ordinarily grow it because I feel like our summers are too hot for cauliflower, but I thought it would be worth trying again. And I've got this tool netting, which is like a bridal veil netting over this. And that is to keep the cabbage butterflies and aphids away from the plants, but it gives a little more air circulation than floating row cover. But you can see my hoops we're not tall enough for these plants. They're pushing up against this cover and it's kind of distorting the leaves a little bit. But I do notice there are a few heads starting to form down lower on the plant. So you never know, we might get something harvestable. In the last bed of this row, I've got four rows of carrots. They're all doing quite well. And then this is my row of rutabagas. And of course, this is the first year I've ever grown them. They grow larger than I thought they would because the leaves are tending to cover this fourth row of carrots. So that was not very good planning on my part. I need to remember that for next year that they need a little more room because I've had to trim off a few of these leaves from the rutabaga plants. But they are starting to form a root, which is very exciting. So let me show you a close up of that. And look at this. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, now we're in the middle row of the main part of the garden and you're looking at one of my tomato beds. In the bed, I'm growing Skyway tomatoes and those are the ones to the left, the larger plants. 
and it's a variety I've never grown before, but a friend of mine who's very smart about vegetables recommended it to me as a nice slicing tomato. And then if you look at this tiny little plant on the right, let me just zoom in a little bit. Check this guy out. This is a plant I'm trialing in my garden. It's only supposed to grow about 12 inches tall, so you can see that it's doing really well. The cultivar name is Good Hearted, and it's from Proven Winners. Look at all of the tomatoes forming on it. I'm really excited about tasting them once they've ripened. Next up are the four beds that I'm growing sweetness bicolor corn in. And look at how they're doing. This is amazing. So I have to tell you that I went on vacation for two weeks recently. And when I left, the plants were about this tall. And you know the old adage, knee high by the 4th of July? Well, the 4th of July is tomorrow. And uh, how about shoulder high? <laughs> I don't know why they have done so well, but apparently they've liked our goofy weather. So I'm very excited. We've grown sweetness by color before. It's very productive and absolutely delicious. And this is a great example of, yes, you can grow corn in raised beds. Now let me show you one other thing I've done to the beds for wind protection. We live in a windy area and if you do too, you might want to take note of this. You know, corn plants have very short stubby roots and if you have a windstorm and they are unprotected, they will snap over at the ground and there is nothing more depressing to come out to your garden after a windstorm and find them all laying down on the ground totally done. So what I do each year is I put in stakes at the four corners of the beds. And then once the plants are about this high, I wrap some jute twine around the perimeter of the bed. And then once they're up about this tall, I put another level of jute twine around the edges of the bed. And I'm going to put it around one more time and what happens when there's a windstorm is they just move a little bit, but not so much to where they're going to snap off at the bottom. Okay, in the last two beds of this row is where I have my pole bean arch. And this year I'm growing musica just like last year and I think the year before even. It is a fabulous pole bean and I've got a ton of them in here that are ready for harvesting. I like to harvest beans when they are young and tender because they will be at their most flavorful and palatable. So let me show you a close-up of those and then I want to show you a weird little problem I have. Here you can see some of the beans. I mean, they're just doing amazingly well. And I think once we get a little more summer heat, we'll get more leafy growth too, which will be good for sheltering this area. I mentioned how I have a weird problem going on in different parts of the garden, and it's centering on earwigs. For some reason, earwigs are absolutely awful this year, and I really don't understand why. So these last few beans here are yard-long beans, which I've never grown before. I was very excited about growing them. And you can see they are in horrible shape. They are really struggling, poor things. I've heard a lot of other people say they are also having problems with earwigs. Initially, I thought the damage was from slugs. But if you go out at night with a flashlight, you will see earwigs on the plants and they are the culprits. Now there's not a whole lot I can do about it at this stage because really the easiest way to protect them initially would be by putting some diatomaceous earth on the ground around the plants. But that wasn't an option at this point because some of the plants that I'm having problems with have leaves that are all over the ground and I just don't know what else to do. But it's a very frustrating problem and it might be something that you're having trouble with this year too. Now before I leave the bean bed, I wanted to show you how nicely the celery is growing. This is tango celery. I absolutely love it. It's got really nice stalks forming. And the great thing about growing your own celery is that you just harvest a stalk or two or three that you need, and then the plants keep developing. 
I used to buy celery from the grocery store. I would use a few stalks for a recipe and then I would forget about it and the rest of the celery would turn into a mushy mess. So this is a much better way to have your own celery whenever you need it. Now I always plant celery on the north side of the pole bean arbor and that's because it gets just a little bit of extra shade and I think the plants do better. It's not a lot but it does give them a little bit of protection from the sun and I think that it really makes a nice difference. On the south side of the bean arbor I'm growing dill which will be great for fish dishes and then I also have basil growing. Now you'll notice the basil looks pathetic. Yup, earwigs again. And that amazes me because on aromatic herbs, they should not like those at all. But unfortunately, they have been just munching away on the leaves. I did put down some diatomaceous earth around them, as you can see, and that does seem to be protecting the plants more. Okay, I'm in the third row now, and this is one of my melon beds. This is Tuscan Napoli, which is a cantaloupe that is absolutely to die for. And they are getting off to kind of a slow start, but I do see a lot of flowers, and hopefully that means melons will be developing soon. This is my broccoli bed. I'm growing early dividend, and you can probably see that some of the heads are starting to form, which is great. I have the tool netting over this, again, for good air circulation, and I can really see what's going on in here. Now, I did have this bed covered with floating row cover for a while because I hadn't had a chance to buy some more tool netting, and I discovered all kinds of earwig munches on them because maybe the earwigs felt like they were a little more protected underneath the floating row cover. Ugh, you just can't win sometimes. But the plants are doing well. I'm keeping an eye on them. They're getting a lot of water, and I'm just waiting for the heads to develop so I can harvest them. This is a great variety. Again, early dividend. In the next bed, I'm growing Kusha winter squash, which is a variety I tried for the first time last year. It's typically grown in the south, but it seems to do just fine in my Spokane, Washington garden. They also make fabulous pies, so they're definitely a keeper. I've got three tomatillo plants growing in here. They are starting to develop the little fruits on them, which is exciting. And we're going to use them for salsa when the time comes. Next to it is vegetable spaghetti squash, a lovely winter squash that's very tasty. And I've noticed that I've got some small ones starting to develop on the vines, which is great. In the last two beds of this row, I'm growing tomatoes, mostly paste tomatoes for making sauces, salsa, and tomato paste. And the variety is called Gilberti, which is another new one to me, but recommended by my friend. I also have in the foreground a couple of Chef's Choice orange tomatoes. These are beefsteak sized orange tomatoes that are absolutely fabulous, especially for a tomato sandwich. And if you're like me, you love to have tomato sandwiches during the summer. At the very end of the row, I'm growing potatoes in one of those cloth grow bags, and they are doing great. Now let's take a look at how things are growing in what I like to call the south annex of our vegetable garden. In the front half of the first bed, I'm growing potatoes. The varieties are Viking Purple and Bluebell, and they are struggling. I'm not sure why. I'm thinking about blaming the earwigs again because there are a lot of leaves that are rather skeletonized. And so I'm just watering them, taking care of them, and hoping for the best. Do you remember how I planted these peas from a rain gutter this spring? And if you missed the video, be sure to look for it on my YouTube channel because it's really interesting. But these plants are green arrow shelling peas. And you can see they're growing really well. What's funny is that the seed packet said they would get 24 inches in height. Well, I'm 5'8". <laughs> yeah. So this is why I'm always harping about using good supports for the plants, no matter what size the packet says they'll grow to. And we did make a nice support underneath here. You just can't see it. 
but the pods are swelling. We have been harvesting them. They're absolutely delicious, and we're just going to keep picking them until it gets too hot because peas do not like hot weather at all, and then they'll shut down. But they're doing great, as you can see, and definitely exceeding my expectations. <laughs> You'll recall we made an arch earlier this season out of livestock panels. It's two panels together. And my goal has been to grow cucumbers, melons, and small winter squash up and over it. So I'm very excited about that and I'm hoping I can pull it off. And of course, with our crazy weather, they're getting off to a slow start. But you can see this vine here is starting to climb up. I just need to sort of tie it in a little bit more. There's even a tiny little squash developing on it, which is very exciting. Let me show you what the cucamelon vines look like because not very many people grow them. I grew them last year for the first time and they're awesome. These tiny little vines are cucamelons and eventually they will really take off and climb up onto this arbor. I can even see some little ones developing. So cucamelons look like a teeny tiny little watermelon. They're citrusy and crunchy, and generally whenever I picked them last year, they never made it out of the garden because I was too happily gobbling them up. But they are planted here and there throughout all of these other plants. They're going to come up over the vine. They are notorious for getting off to a very slow start, and then suddenly they kick it into gear so I'm hoping to have way more cucamelons than I had last year. In the same bed, but outside of the arbor, I'm growing some watermelons for the first time. The variety is gold in gold. It's a short season watermelon, and I decided it was worth trying in our short season climate. I will keep you posted on that one. I've uncovered my Swiss chard and beet bed so you can see how it's growing and it's really not doing all that great. I use the floating row cover on the bed to keep the adult leaf miner away from the plants. And that's because they lay eggs on the leaves and then when the maggots hatch, they basically eat the leaves from the inside out, which is not good. Well, I don't have any leaf miner problems, but something has been munching on some of the leaves and the plants are just struggling. It's really frustrating. I don't understand what's going on. And I had originally decided to plant them in this area this year because it's an area that gets a little more shade and I thought, boy, they'll do really great here. But apparently I was wrong. I don't know why they're unhappy and it's gonna take a little sleuthing on my part. Here's the lettuce bed behind where the arbor is, and you can see I'm growing several different types. I've got speckled trout, butter crunch. The red lettuce is Lola Rosa. I've got red sails in there, which is an awesome leaf lettuce that I grow every single year. And in the foreground on the left is an oak leaf lettuce that has a reddish cast to it too. Once again, when the weather gets really hot, the lettuce will be done, but for now we are in salad heaven every night. I didn't mention earlier that we have two large raised beds along the edge of our vegetable garden that are filled with raspberry plants, and the raspberries are just starting to ripen. Yum! It's my favorite time of year. I hope you enjoyed this little tour of our vegetable garden, and if you ever have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. My email address is susan at susansinthegarden.com. I'll see you next week. Mm.